Hey, welcome back to another edition of Avid Golfer Magazine's Drive Time Feature. Now, you know there's no shortage of SUVs and crossovers on, on the market to catch your eye and your wallet. From low prices to sky's the limit prices, luxury appointments, performance, everything else. This one, I think, hits kind of the sweet spot if you're looking for a, an affordable family SUV, carries cargo, carries passengers. This is the 2022 Buick Envision and it's been around a while they made some nice upgrades but it's at a very affordable price i want to thank the folks over at ewing buick gmc for the use of this vehicle let's get to it we'll talk about the interior the exterior and how it rides so stay tuned Let's start off with the exterior because that's what catches people's eye first impression right so i love the black i think it casts a nice uh it enhances the shape of this kind of streamlined kind of badass a little bit right these are 20 inch rims that are blacked out uh that's when you get the sport touring package that's an option everything else is pretty standard i mean you have really nice side view mirrors with very uh uh very generous so the blind spot you also have a blind spot in your uh, in your seat too when you hear something when it senses something coming what i like about these cars when they have the roof rails that are low they're still useful you can still put a little bracket on it you can haul anything you want but it's not sticking up like this i like it because it kind of just follows the the uh, roof line and i think it does it in an unobtrusive way thumbs up right, let's check out the rear because everybody wants to know about cargo space hands free hatch Nice metal flake on the uh, paint too. All right, so the first thing I always look at, I want to get a full bag in with driver, with the cutouts. I want to put it in horizontally. It's much easier to take in and out. Look back here, pretty good amount of, um, of cargo space with the rear seats folded down. They fold down flat. That's very uh, advantageous. And um, it's, uh, let's see, it is 25 cubic feet with the rear seats up and 52-ish down. Decent. It's probably roughly what it should be in this uh, category. Some would be a little bigger, some would be a little bit smaller, but for use-wise, I think this just fits the bill. All right, let's check out the rear. One thing I always look at, if you're gonna have four doors and seats in the back, how uh, comfortable is it? How roomy is it? Because you're gonna be carrying people back here. So, I have, I'm 5'10" probably normal um, seat positioning. Look how much room I have back here. And the other thing I like is there's no constraint as far as my feet getting stuck underneath. I could sit back here and be perfectly happy. I mean the seats are vented. I mean they, they're you know they're perforated so they help with the back sweat. It's kind of a leatherette type material here. Double stitching which looks good. The contrast stitching. You have uh, air vents and you have uh, some USB ports to deal with that will help. We also have a cup holder there if you need that or maybe just an armrest. So pretty standard stuff, um, but it's comfortable. And so if I'm taking people around, I don't have to feel bad that they're all scrunched up. Uh, pretty good head headroom right here too. So again, thumbs up. Good job, Buick. All right, let's talk about the interior because this is where we're gonna reside most of the time. I'm more of a driver oriented person. So I'm gonna mostly talk about where I'm sitting right here and how this is all interplays and so forth. So first and foremost, sit down in the seat, very comfy, decent support, not a lot of lumbar or uh, side bolstering, but that's okay. It's not a sports sedan, it's a cruising sedan. Steering wheel's all leather, feels pretty good. Um, everything is right there in front of you. Uh, you have, you know, you have your digital display here, which I love. I don't, I don't like looking at trying to guess uh, analogs uh, speedometers and then if I want to I can change this infotainment right here I can move this to different things I can go to media I can go to how far I've gone mileage and then I can scroll down as well I can go do any number of things so you just play with it but it, I like it because it's all right here on your fingertip one thing it doesn't have though at least I couldn't find it um, there's only one place to turn up the volume or down. It's right here. There's nothing on the wheel that I could see, and I looked at everything. Um, 
But having said that, really good visibility all the way around, which you want an SUV, and you should because it's more glass than anything else. Good side view mirrors, like I mentioned earlier. And um, the gas mileage is 24 and 31. So with a 15, almost 16 gallon gas tank, that's almost, that's a little over 400 mile range, which I think is pretty good. As far as other things are considered, um, you have more USB ports here. Uh, okay, here's, here's what I find interesting. I don't want, a lot of companies are starting to go to this. Instead of a gear shift, they have buttons. So I'm in park right now. If I want to go in reverse, gotta do that. If I want to go and drive, gotta do that. So I'm not sure if it's saving a lot of room, but once you get used to it, it's pretty intuitive. But if I go in reverse here, you can see there's a backup camera. Shows you how far, if I'm gonna hit something, which I love that. I mean, I've gotten so used to it, I'm just turned into a crummy parker because I don't have to worry about it anymore. This is a bigger screen. So that's nice for the eyes. You put it in, in home. And uh, let's do this. Put it back in park. Now you're at home. Um, if I want to put this in Apple CarPlay, I can do that. It brings up my screen. Some people love it. Um, you can turn it off whenever. You can keep it on whenever. But it keeps everything where you what you have as far as your different um, uh, settings go. And every, it just looks just like your iPhone. So if you're used to that, the learning curve is shorter. Uh, let's see, other net, you have some nice controls right here. Sometimes you get them all on the infotainment screen, and it's kind of a hassle when you're driving, at least with climate and the things you're going to use the most. They're all laid down right there. You have uh, heated uh, seats on both sides. I can also heat my steering wheel as well. That is a godsend. I talk to people, you should, if you have the chance, get it. Because if you keep your car out in the winter time, it's not insulated in the garage or whatever, this takes forever to warm up. In fact, I don't know if it ever does. This is like wearing mittens without wearing mittens. It's real nice. Um, other than that, that's pretty much the extent of it. Again, decent luxury appointments. You got some nice cross stitching here, like I said. The materials are pretty good. The seats feel great. And um, so you feel like you're, you're driving something a little more upscale without paying a huge upscale price. And that will, they sell a lot of these for a good reason because people, the new families, kids, and everything, they got budgets. So you don't feel like you're shortchanging yourself buying something down and dirty. It gives you an, enough luxury uh, benefits that you feel like, okay, it's a good buy. I like this. I feel good when I'm driving this thing around. Storage, pretty standard. You have a real deep one here. You have a decent glove compartment. You got a little more storage here. That's where I put my phone. Storage in the, uh, in the doors. You can change the, uh, the height of your uh, rear hatch. Uh, comes in handy if you have a kind of a low garage door when you're going in because this thing will go all the way up and you'll scratch it and everything so you can you can adjust it by that little uh, knob right there very thoughtful uh, you can also get a head-up display um, you can put this in different modes I can put this in sport I can put it in snow and ice comes standard all uh, front-wheel drive if you want all-wheel drive it's eighteen hundred dollars um, I always think that's a benefit because you only need it once and if, and if it serves its purpose, it's worth its weight in gold, so you don't have to take it to the body shop or whatever. So, all in all, uh, it it drives the way it should. Um, it's smooth. It soaks up all the bumps. It's got decent pep. It's a four-cylinder, 2.0, 228 horsepower, 258 torque. It'll tow up to 1,500 pounds. And there you go. It's That's a pretty good uh, nutshell review if you're interested, and I think you should drive this if you, uh, you're looking for something in this price range and in this category, I would take a look at this. Um, this gives you a decent idea, uh, at least going in, some of the features that uh, I think you'd be interested in. So there you have it. It's a 2022 Buick Envision. This is the Essence Sport Touring Package, the middle ground, I'd say. They base it about 32000 Again, pretty affordable given all price ranges that are out there for you. This one uh, taps out about 39 the way this is tested. Again, I want to thank the folks over at Ewing Buick GMC for the, the use of the vehicle. If you're looking for an affordable people hauler, cargo hauler with pretty good pep, decent luxury appointments, I think you should check this one out. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.